Coming up on today's show, rumors suggest BMW is dropping the Vision M project, but investing more in mainstream EVs and hydrogen fuel cells. Lucid's Peter Rawlinson talks about the special source that gives the Lucid Air its crazy energy efficiency, and Tesla patents a new tabless battery that could be super revolutionary. These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter transportation. We have got lots to get to today, including details of the eMobility Equity Town Hall, a free online event on May 28th that you won't want to miss. There are details at the end of the show. Thanks to the Electric Auto Association for their sponsorship today. Find out how you can accelerate the electrification of transport today by going to electricauto.org. We start today with the unconfirmed rumor that BMW's Vision M Next plug-in hybrid supercar might have been canceled by the company. As BMW blog explained this week, the Vision M was due to be the replacement to BMW's now discontinued i8. But it cites both its own sources and other news outlets in claiming that the car has been canceled. Before you start believing that BMW is pulling back from plug-in vehicles completely though, it's worth noting that the company issued a press release this week discussing the impact of coronavirus and the company. Despite the impacts of COVID-19, it reiterated its commitment to spending $32 billion on research and development into both battery electric and hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicles between now and 2025. By the time this video goes live on YouTube, it's likely that Tesla's Fremont production facility has once again started producing cars, despite continued shelter-in-place orders in Alameda County, where the factory is based. And that's because on Thursday, Elon Musk sent an email to employees at the facility laying out plans for a resumption of production with a 30% Tesla normal workforce as of Friday afternoon. It was in response to California Governor Gavin Newsom announcing California moving to stage two of its COVID-19 reopening plan. Musk has been a vocal opponent of physical distancing orders and jumped at the chance to reopen Fremont. But because there are legal questions concerning if Tesla's Fremont facility is actually considered stage two essential, things may have changed again. Škoda has published the first video of its upcoming Enyaq 4 electric car ahead of a launch next year. Based off the MEB platform that underpins Volkswagen's ID3, remember that Škoda is part of the Volkswagen Group, the Enyaq 4 looks like a no-nonsense estate car, or station wagon if you prefer, with 585 litres of load base space. There's a choice of rear or all-wheel drive capabilities depending on the model chosen, as well as three different battery options and a claimed range of up to 500 kilometers on the range-topping model. Like the ID3, there's a maximum 125 kilowatts rapid charging option and up to 11 kilowatts of onboard charging power. We'll get pricing for it in the near future. The week after he scared some of us with his bizarre Twitter tweets, Elon Musk was back in the spotlight this week, rejoining the controversial Joe Rogan on the Joe Rogan Experience online talk show. Just like the last time Musk joined Rogan, there was plenty discussed covering a whole wide range of different topics, and of course, that included Musk's various business endeavours. Although this time Elon did stay away from pot. During the two-hour show, Musk stated that none of Tesla's Chinese employers at Giga Shanghai were killed by COVID-19, said that it was likely the Tesla Cybertruck window that was so famously broken during the reveal event was likely damaged with the sledgehammer demo earlier on in the event before those steel balls were fired at it. I'll be covering more from this interview later in the show. Despite the impact that coronavirus has left around the world, one of Volkswagen's board members, Jürgen Stackmann, tweeted this week that Volkswagen will open up its official order books for the ID3 in just over a month's time on June 17th. This does seem to suggest that Volkswagen's winter of hell with the ID3 software as well as production issues may be coming to an end, but I should note at this point that only those with actual confirmed reservations or 
pre-reservations, if you will, for the ID3 will actually be able to order their car on June 17th. Following a pattern that's now become completely standard across the entire electric vehicle industry, Volkswagen is going to focus on fulfilling those pre-reservations before opening up the order books to non-reservation holders. In a world without COVID-19, we'd have already seen the reveal event for the upcoming Lucid Air sedan, and I'm guessing we'd know a whole lot more about it. I may have even driven one. But this week, company CEO Peter Rawlinson, the original engineer for the Tesla Model S, discussed with the IEEE Spectrum magazine some of the details about the car's specs, including its impressive efficiency figures. Apparently, it's all down to a new permanent magnet Signorus motor, in which Rawlinson says the company has managed to get it to spin like an induction motor. This eliminates the cogging torque from the traditional PMSM motor and thus gives it a far, far better efficiency. At the moment, that efficiency is said to be a very impressive four miles per kilowatt hour. As I alluded to earlier in the show, Elon Musk discussed a whole lot of things on the Rogan Experience this week, including future Tesla vehicles. And one that did get quite a mention was the Tesla Roadster, the version 2, a car that Tesla had originally planned to launch by now. According to Musk, the second generation Roadster won't enter production until both the Tesla Semi and the Tesla Cybertruck are on the market, which by a little deductive reasoning means that I think it will probably be at least 2022 until we see it, as that's when the Tesla Semi has just been delayed to. When asked for details, Musk said that, quote, that's better left for a real production unveil. But with the Roadster, we're going to do some things that are unfair. People who have been waiting for the Roadster won't be disappointed. It's not exactly clear what he meant in that statement, but I guess we'll have to wait to find out. Volvo has just announced that its next generation of cars, both electric and non-electric, will feature advanced LiDAR systems manufactured by Lumina. The idea to future-proof all of its current and new models so that at some point in the future it will be able to push autonomous vehicle functionality to its customers' cars via an over-the-air software update system. It's long been a goal of Volvo to offer its Highway Pilot, which is similar to Tesla's Autopilot, on customers' cars. Volvo is close to a fully autonomous future for all of its cars, and it's already proving itself very competent. But rather than introduce software now, it says it wants to gradually introduce features as legislation and technology allows. With this latest announcement, Volvo is continuing to stand by its early promise of indemnifying drivers from any fault when its autonomous features are operating and there's a crash. That's an approach that's noticeably different to Tesla's. Tesla has just patented a new battery cell construction that revolves around what's called a tabless electrode. It's all to do with the way that cylindrical cells are constructed. Current cells are essentially a long roll of two different materials separated by an electrolyte with a tab on the top for one electrode and a tab on the bottom for the other. They're then rolled up. Using this technology though, current must flow through the long roll before it can exit out of the end of the battery. Tesla's patent, meanwhile, focuses on pulling current out of the sides of that long roll. So when the roll is rolled up to become the battery cell, current has far less to travel before exiting the battery, which lowers internal resistance and improves lifespan. It also seems similar to something we heard Atlas talk about a few months ago with its battery cell design. So it's likely that both companies are thinking along the same lines. And now it's time for short shorts. After closing some Seattle neighborhood streets to make it easier and safer for people to exercise while remaining physically distanced during COVID-19, the mayor of Seattle has confirmed that 20 miles of city streets will be permanently closed to through traffic to improve quality of life for residents. Rumours flying around about the upcoming Audi Q4 e-tron suggest that the mid-size crossover will retail from just $45,000. It's based on Volkswagen's MEB platform and so is expected to offer a similar performance and specifications to the ID3. Fiat's brand president, Olivier Francois, doubled down on past claims that the new Fiat 500, which is only available as an electric vehicle, will be the brand's, quote, urban Tesla. Francois told Auto Express that the car's really performing thanks to its new ground-up redesign. Planet of the Humans, Michael Moore's latest docufilm that attacks the green economy and companies like Tesla, has claimed that Germany 
had a new liquid natural gas terminal and showed footage of it in the film. But as detailed this week, it turns out that that platform hasn't been built yet and the footage used was taken from a YouTube ad filmed in Turkey. Whoops. Volkswagen may only be getting ready to start deliveries of the ID3 this summer, but apparently the ID4 is already in production. That's according to YouTube channel Next Move, which visited a Volkswagen facility, the Zweika facility, and says it saw the ID4 on the line next to the ID3. Finnish motorcycle company Verge Motorcycles has officially revealed the production version of its TS electric motorcycle. Powered by an 80 kilowatt motor fitted to a hubless rear wheel, it looks amazing and has a performance to boot. I want to ride. 85% of the 17 and a half thousand car owners surveyed by the UK's AA said that electric car charging stations need to be better signposted and that those signs need to be green rather than the blue that they currently are. That's to make them easier to spot. A survey from employment site Blind, a competitor to glass doors, shows that more than half of Tesla employees think that Elon Musk's recent tweet storms have harmed the company's reputation. Interestingly, though, Blind's website is blocked from Tesla's corporate network. Volkswagen's design chief, Klaus Bischoff, has said that it would have been the wrong decision for Volkswagen to design vehicles with multiple powertrain options rather than design electric vehicles as ground up EV models. I think most EV owners would agree. Rumours from China suggest that Tesla did not fully reopen its Giga Shanghai following May Day celebrations due to supply chain problems. Like so many businesses, it does seem that COVID-19 is still creating havoc, even in places that have been reopened. We haven't been able to confirm these rumors. Nissan has just revealed a new version of its ENV200 electric van, the ENV200 XL Voltia. Based on the ENV200, it has a higher ceiling and a longer rear, which accommodates a much larger cargo space. Two different European companies will produce the models as coach-built vehicles on behalf of Nissan. Polestar has announced that it will deliver customers Polestar 2 electric cars up to a distance of 150 miles radius from its US stores when deliveries start later this year. The deliveries will make it possible for customers to have a minimal contact delivery. Mercedes-Benz market research and development boss has criticized Volkswagen for making electric hatchbacks, suggesting instead that people just want crossovers and nothing else. It does explain why the Mercedes-Benz EQA morphed from a sedan to a crossover during its development cycle. New car sales in the UK fell to 97% last month, to a low not seen for 70 years. But the handful of cars that were sold, Tesla's Model 3 topped the charts, partly because of the high fleet sales during the period. April, though, is the start of the new tax year in the UK, so I'm thinking that companies with extra cash on hand have been buying brand new electric company cars. Workhorse says it will begin deliveries of its C-Series vans next quarter, a little later than it had previously planned. The C-1000 and C-650 are designed for use as delivery vehicles, security trucks, and would probably make great food trucks as well. Reports are coming in that suggest Tesla's sentry mode may be behaving a little weirdly after a recent software update. Tesla is apparently aware of the issue and is working on a software fix that will be pushed during the next over-the-air update to get the sentry mode system working again. In addition to all the other things that Elon Musk was busy with this week, he also became a father again, as his partner, musician Grimes, gave birth to her first child and his seventh. They named the baby X A A12 Musk. Congratulations, Good luck to the child's features in the future, because as a former teacher, I've got no clue how to say that. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. As you probably know, we like to cover all forms of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter transportation here. And this week is no exception. We're covering the news that Volt Aero has just revealed the production version of its Casio hybrid electric aircraft. And no, it's not a keyboard or a watch. Designed to be capable of electric only and hybrid electric flight, the planes make use of what the firm is calling a pusher configuration with a propeller mounted to the rear of the fuselage. Initial deliveries will be scheduled for 2022 with the four seat variant, the Casio 330, being the first one off the production line. 
It's certainly unique, especially for an airplane, but it does remind me a little bit of some of the sailplanes I've come across in the past. And finally, Ford's been promising us an electric pickup truck for some time. And we know that the F-150 electric and hybrid is now in development ahead of reveal this year or maybe next. But if you're looking for a larger Ford pickup, you're pretty much out of luck, at least when it comes to production electric vehicles. But engineers Greg Coles, Bill Scalia, and their colleagues at Selco LLC have been busy at work converting a Ford F450 pickup truck to electric. Using Tesla components, they've meticulously taken this usually diesel-powered Julie apart and made it zero emissions. And as their latest video shows, they've got a lot of torque to play with, plus four-wheel drive and four different gear options to choose from. They're just about done with the build, but you should totally go and watch the videos they've put up so far to see how they've got to this point. I've linked to it below. And on that note, it's the end of this week's show. But before I go, I do want to thank the Electric Auto Association for sponsoring today's News Roundup show. They've been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967, and they all firmly believe that our future depends on us making the switch to clean green electric cars today. You can find out how to join, how to become a local EV educator, find local monthly meetups to talk to, uh, both virtual and real life, or just find EV owners to talk about making the switch to electric if you haven't by going to electricauto.org. I'd also like to tell you about the National E-Mobility Equity Town Hall that EV Noir and Forth are co-hosting on May 28th from 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. The whole conference, which is going to focus on different facets of the e-mobility equity ecosystem, is completely free to attend and it's going to be taking place online via Zoom. If you are interested in an electric vehicle future that is open to all members of your community, then this is a conference you won't want to miss and it's free. You'll find out the registration link if you look below. We'd love it if you would like, comment and subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet. And if you do feel able, please do consider supporting us using one of the links below. As you probably know by now, we have cut back on our spending in order to weather the impending uh, recession and keep this business afloat. And that means we are getting rid of our brick and mortar studio in July and I'm going to start working from home. But like many content creators, we are starting to feel the pinch of the impending recession. If you can, we're always grateful for whatever support you can give, whatever that means. And that includes making sure you watch the ads, share our stuff and engage with the channel on social media because this all helps the algorithms. I'm probably going to move our Sunday hangouts to midweek from now on, but you can catch me tomorrow racing in Forza 7 with the rest of the awesome folks at Plugin Racing. Go to pluginracing.com to see the fun and watch me crash and come last. Oh, and congrats to David and his husband who just reached out this week to say thanks for all the help that we've given them through YouTube. They've just purchased their first EV, a Kona Electric, and they're having a blast. Well done, guys. I'll be back with another show very soon. So thanks for joining me. Stay safe, wash your hands, and as always, keep evolving.